Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Glenn and this is episode 6 of the Ozorn painting series. In this episode I'm painting the penitent. If you're new to miniature painting I hope you find this video interesting and helpful. If you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below. As usual let's see how I went from a pristine unpainted miniature to this fully painted one. Let's begin. First I remove all the mold lines by using a hobby knife. The mold lines can be found on the body and all the weapons. Next I assemble the model. These are the first edition models and they come unassembled. I use two different glues which are essentially the same glue. However for the one to the right I have added some leftover plastic sprue from other model kits like Warhammer. The plastic sprue is added to the glue to achieve a thick mixture which is ideal for filling gaps on miniatures along the connection points. I use the glue on the left for the legs. For everything else I go with the glue that has some added plastic sprue. This technique works great for joining parts as it effectively fills any gaps that might otherwise be visible. When pressing the parts together any excess glue is pushed to the surface closing the gap. A bit of extra glue is okay and even beneficial. Once the glue is dry you can easily remove any excess with a knife or file. If you still have small gaps just apply more of the mixture until they are filled. Once the glue is dry I remove any excess. If the surface becomes rough I use the pure glue to smooth it out. I'm closing a gap along the leg with the mixture. And I use the pure glue to smooth out the mixture. I also found a recess in the back of the head which I filled with the mixed glue. One thing I forgot to mention in all my previous videos is that I always wash and clean my models in soapy water and then rinse them in clean water before painting. Next I prime the model black by using an airbrush. This can also be applied by using a can of black primer. Next I apply a heavy dry brushing with gun metal. The technique that works best for me to achieve a smooth dry brush finish without any dusty appearance is to dip the brush in water and then remove the excess until it's almost dry. This leaves a small amount of moisture which is ideal for a nice finish. In my experience if the brush is completely dry the results tends to appear dusty. The following steps is great and quick for any metal surface.
The next color is Swarplock Bronze using the dry brushing technique. I also stippled this on the surface. I use a smaller dry brush from now on and I follow up with chain mill silver. When I dry brush I use downwards and sidewards brush strokes. The final color I dry brush with is steel, concentrating on the edges and the exposed areas. I avoid adding metallics to the wet palette because of the metal pigments. I don't want them mixed with my other colors. That's also why I make sure to change the cups of water I use for rinsing the brushes.
The model should look something like this after all the dry brushing. I move on to painting some base coats to have a better feeling of the process. I apply corn red to the cloth around the waist, the cape and the plume. Next I apply steel lenient drab to the parchments. I use beastie brown on the fur around the neck. And for the leather parts I use charred brown. I paint the cloth parts on the arms and the legs with a black color. I use pure Baylor Brown on the fur. And also Baylor Brown mixed with Beastie Brown for further layering. I use a mix of Baylor Brown and Morgast Bone for highlights. I follow up with the last highlights using pure Morgast Bone. I use a mix of steel lithium drab and bone white as a layer on the parchments, avoiding small areas to create some kind of dirt. I also avoid the less exposed areas. Next I use pure bone white for highlights going along the edges. This process is applied to all the parchments.
I also go along the very edges with a stippling or scratching technique to make the parchments look more interesting. I apply a layer of Moon Lake Coral to shade the cloth, the cape and the plume. As the moon lake coral dries, I move on to the leather parts. I use tones of charred brown and scrag brown to layer these areas. Jukero Orange is applied as the final highlight on the edges and to make some small scratches. This process is also applied to the handle on the weapon. I paint the small bit holding the parchment with steel. Next I paint a symbol with black. I do a tiny cleanup with steel. and apply a mix of sealot yellow and hardened leather.
For the cloth around the waist, I make a transition from the deep red to the raised areas, starting with corn red, avoiding the crevices. Next I use Mephiston Red, making the transition from the applied corn red to the raised areas. I follow up with Wild Rider Red, focusing on the raised areas. I make small brush strokes along the edges to create some texture. On the very edges of the cloth and for scratches I use Fire Dragon Bright. Paint the cape similar to the cloth around the waist. I start making a transition from the deep red to the raised areas starting with corn red. I avoid the crevices on the cape. Next I use Mephiston Red, making the transition from the applied corn red to the raised areas. Keep in mind, throughout this process I go back and forth between the different tones of red to achieve a neat transition. I also use Moonlit Coral to shade the crevices even more. This is also to smooth out the transition. I mix Wild Rider Red and Mephiston Red for further layering. I follow up with Wild Rider Red, focusing on the raised areas. On the very edges of the cape and for scratches, I use Fire Dragon Bright mixed with Wild Rider Red.
And lastly, with pure fire dragon bright, just a small amount of edge highlighting. This process is also applied to the plume, leaving out the scratches. I use a mixture of dark reaper and black for layering the black cloth on the arms and the legs, concentrating on the raised areas. I follow up with pure dark reaper. And I apply the final highlight with a mix of dark reaper and fenrisian grey. Let's return to the parchments. I begin painting thin lines with black. Then I add very small lines or dots in the opposite direction to create the appearance of letters. I also use corn red for capital letters. I applied this technique to all the parchments on the model, creating a somewhat random pattern with capital letters in both black and red. I want to add some shading to the armor and make it reflect the surroundings. For this I use blood red on the armor near the cloth and the cape. After applying the paint, I rinse the brush, wipe it on a cloth, and then blend out the red color. I'm cautious not to apply too much. My approach is to start with a small amount and see if I'm satisfied. It's easy to add more if necessary. My goal is to give the armor a subtle hint of red. I proceed to work on the areas of the armor where I want a darker appearance. I achieve this using high dweller purple and speed paint medium to find the purple color, which works great for this purpose. I use the same technique, rinsing the brush and wiping it off and then blend out the purple color. The brush will soak up some of the paint. This helps blend out the transition. This is also a learning process. 
My goal is just a hint of purple. I apply it quite heavily on the weapon and leave it as it is. And then continue on the chest. And next, the helmet. The shoulder pads and don't forget the elbows. And finally, the seals following the same process as previously. I use steel to bright up areas that are exposed to the light source from above and to highlight the edges. If I happen to cover up too much with steel, I simply reapply the purple color as needed. Don't forget to highlight the small details. Let's move on to the base. I covered the base in white primer. Next I use sea lot yellow, hardened leather, orc skin, high lot blue and grave lot grey. These colors are applied to the base in a manner similar to what I have done in my previous videos. I create a random pattern while ensuring there is contrast between the colors. For some reason I had to apply a second coat of speed paint to achieve the desired level of saturation. It's possible I forgot to shake the paints properly. I highlight the base using Bone White, Caliban Green and Uriel Yellow. I use tones of Caliban Green and Uriel Yellow for the green areas and Bone White for the light or brown areas. I go two laps around the base rim with a black color. 
time for some extra flair. I grabbed blood for the blood god and gave the flail a gruesome look, as if the penitent just defeated a ferocious deepwood creature. As the creature's skull got crushed, it made one last daring move, spraying blood everywhere in the attempt to blind the penitent. But fear not, our hero wasn't having any of it. He deftly blocked the attack with his trusty shield. No creatures gonna catch him off guard. I use Doombull Brown on the scratches and in the recesses of the shield. The same technique is applied to the armor, giving the metal a withered appearance. I use the same process with Lauren Forest on the metal parts of the model. I covered the model in a coat of satin varnish to give the armor a subtle shine and to protect the paints. Afterwards, I covered the parchments and the cloth parts in matte varnish by using a brush to give these areas a more matte finish. I also covered the blood effect with gloss varnish which gives a fresh, wet appearance. As the last step, I add some tufts to the base, starting with a plant from Gamer Grass. This is added to the base using superglue. Next, I add some tufts and flowers also using the super glue. The plant had a white edge all around the leaves since it was pressed out of a seed. I covered the edge with warlord purple. As the final step, I applied matte varnish to the plant to remove the shiny appearance it had. And with that, the miniature is complete. Let's have a look at the final result. Once, I aspired to be a knight, but I stumbled and fell from that path. I carry the weight of my failures, my sins, on these tattered scrolls and armor. Each wound endured, each foe vanquished, brings me closer to redemption. In the embrace of our fellowship, I find solace and the purifying punishment I yearn for. Together, we journey through the depths of the deep wood, where my last breath shall see my penance complete. Cursed creatures stand at our gates, and the Painting Chronicles Brotherhood stands at the ready to face this evil. Join our cause by subscribing, and we shall triumph together. Pillar and Path Brothers. Also like and comment. <laughs>